Deepest distress 
correct? 469, please. 469. Thank God that I found him and that you found him. Amen. And you found him at the cross of Calvary. And you realize you can't get no better friend than him. 469. protective hedge around this room and everyone in it, soaking with the blood of the Lamb spilled at the cross at Calvary. Father, we're all coming here today because we have something in common. We want to hear from you, uh, and we want our lives to be changed so that we can go out this next week serving you day in and day out. I pray that you would give Pastor Holy Ghost unction and give him spiritual boldness to preach exactly what you put on his heart, and I pray that what he puts on our heart, we would not harden our neck, Father God, but that we would take it gladly and that we would, uh, we would just take it into this next week and have it all be used for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 All right, you may be seated. You may be seated. All right, please take out your white hymnal. Please take out your white hymnal. And what's the song, Joanna? 70. 70. All right, page 70 in your white hymn book. Page 70 in your white hymn book. In your white song book, if you can turn to page 70. Page 70. Okay. <laughs> Thank God we're going to see the king someday. Amen. Yes. What page, All right. Right. page 70 in your white hymn books. Page yes, 70. Sir. Though the way we journey may be often drear, we shall see the king someday. On that blessed morning, clouds will disappear. We shall see the king someday. We shall see the king someday. We will shout and sing someday. Gathered round the throne when he shall call his own. We shall see the king someday. After pain and anguish, after toil and care, we shall see the King someday. Through the endless ages, joy and blessing share. We shall see the King someday. We shall see the King someday. We will shout and sing someday. Gathered round the throne when he shall 
all his own. We shall see the king someday. After foes are conquered, after battles won, we shall see the king someday. After strife is over, after set of sun, we shall see the king someday. Oh, we shall see the king someday. We will shout and sing someday. Gather round the throne when he shall call his own. We shall see the king someday. There with all the loved ones who have gone before. We shall see the king someday. Sorrow passed forever on that peaceful shore. We shall see the king someday. We shall see the king someday. We will shout and sing someday. Gather round the throne when he shall call his own. We shall see the king someday. see him face to face. Quick announcements, Bible study uh, Friday. We have discipleship 7 p.m. and then we have Bible study uh, 8 p.m. It'll be at my place. Anyone who is interested, uh, contact uh, me and then uh, I will give you the location on where to meet. Also, Sunday it will be visitation. We're going to have visitation. Brother Tom, he'll make sure to text everybody where the location will be for door knocking so we can win some souls to salvation. Don't forget July 28th is a really big day, potluck, 7 to 10 p.m. I'm going to, uh, we're going to have um, uh, three guest speakers coming, so that's going to be a big day. And then the Sunday after that, which is our regular church hours, our missionary will be speaking as well as the uh, second guest speaker. The first guest speaker will be speaking Saturday on our fellowship. And the other guest speaker, or the other two, they will be speaking on the both Sunday services. Potluck, Saturday, 7 to 10 p.m. Sunday service hours are the same, but it will be two guest speakers. So if you can come, that will be a tremendous big blessing. Summer camp is going to be the day after that. So we're gonna, so our church is going to hear like, like five to seven speakers. So that's going to be a blessing. Amen. That's basically eight days straight, you know. So that's like... Uh, really a tremendous blessing. So anyways, uh, please prep your schedules for that, save your money, and then pray, pray, because we want to make sure God the Holy Spirit really puts His blessing on it so that uh, lives can be changed in our church and other people who attend as well. Okay, so I believe I covered all the important announcements. There's a bulletin, July 2018. I believe you all got it on the email. Volunteers and church programs that are needed. So in the first page, you'll mention certain things that you can get involved in. If you want to get involved in doing something for the Lord, the first page will mention volunteers and church programs needed. That way you guys can get involved and do something for the Lord. Uh, the progress of last month is also recorded as well. It mentions 300 tracks, six new convert materials, six Bibles taken. Internet ministry is 6,949 comments, 5,128 subscribers, and 15,954 shares. We got five souls saved last month, so that's a blessing. Uh, prayers answered is that we've seen a miracle with uh, Erica's baby, amen, has no cancer. So that's a tremendous blessing. And so keep uh, your prayers for Erica, that way um, the Lord can put his shield of protection upon her and she can have hopefully some healing as well. Chuck's cancer as well, so thank you so much for praying. It's not terminal, so he is very, very happy. Okay, so it's in there, but it's not terminal. So he's very happy. He's going to be coming Saturday Fellowship, all right? So it'll be a big blessing, so he'll be there. Okay, this uh, other fruits in our ministry is that uh, the Virginia Church. So as you know, we have a satellite church at Virginia. They're staying strong in the Lord. Uh, they're still going. Amen. We. I was able to baptize one person over there. That's a blessing. 
Um, also, I led a person to salvation on the phone. So that's another fruit right there. So the Lord, see, every month we're seeing some sort of fruit. So like I keep telling you guys, that's why this bulletin is there for you. It doesn't matter how large or small your work is. The point is every month, you know, if you stay faithful to the Lord, he'll produce some sort of fruit that's in right. your life. And remember, we didn't even have a large internet ministry back then. So before that, we were still producing fruit. So let's keep up the good work. All right, the monthly tithing progress is also mentioned right here. Okay, so you can keep tabs on how much is given and what's going away and what is spent, etc. All right, memory verses. So today will obviously be review. Now, I'm very excited about the next weeks of memory verses. We're going to memorize Psalms 119. Obviously not the whole chapter, so don't get scared. But I, I'm very excited because Psalms 119 is rich with very good verses to memorize. So I picked salient verses out of Psalms 119 for you to memorize, and they're very, very good verses, trust me. You would want to use these for street preaching too sometimes. So these are really good verses. I look forward to that. All right, in the second page, it lists the total monthly progress as well, how many chapters of the Bible you read. And like I mentioned before, in page 3 and 4, page 3 and 4, it lists the prayer time chart, the Bible reading chart, and the track passing chart. So average three tracks a day, you reach more than 1,000 souls by the end of the year. Uh, you spend somewhere, be, uh, you spend about uh, three chapters of the Bible per day, you get through the whole Bible by the end of the year. And then you spend about 15 to 20 minutes in prayer, and then you'd accomplish a lot more for God. All right, so then the total progress of 2017 will be listed on page two. What we would have, uh, why did I say 17? It should be 18. So the total progress of 2018, what it would have happened was that an average of 10 members, so only 10, would have read half of the Bible by now. An average of 10 members would have spent more than 30 hours of winning lost souls. San Jose Bible Baptist Church would have prayed nearly 400 hours for God to save lost souls, meet the needs of fellow Christians, support of dozens of ministers and ministries, and so much more. San Jose Bible Baptist Church would have passed nearly 6,000 tracts. San Jose Bible Baptist Church has nearly 80 souls to salvation. Can you believe that? So that's a big blessing. And then San Jose Bible Baptist Church would have memorized four entire Bible chapters and one entire Bible doctrine. So don't forget the dozens of fruit from answered prayers, internet ministry results, and personal testimonies so far. Now, you guys kept tithing, and you'd be surprised how much it accomplished by the end of the year. So we should have been gone a long time ago, and my enemies would have been happy if I was gone a long time ago. But you guys, see, I, it doesn't matter the size I keep telling you. Amen. It's amazing that in one of the most expensive places in the America that a small work is giving that much, working hard, and serving God. So that's a big blessing. That's a big blessing. So God bless you guys. Okay, and then uh, obviously this part will be edited, but page 5 and page 6 is the prayer list. Is the prayer list. So it's amazing that a small church like ours is supporting uh, six, right, brother? Six missionaries? Six missionaries. So if those two didn't drop, we would have been done doing eight, actually. So, Lord willing, by the end of July, it'll be our 7th, and then uh, the one who's coming at August will be our 8th, so that'll be a blessing. So, a small church supporting eight missionaries, ain't that a blessing? So, let that encourage people out there, all right? doesn't matter how big or small you are. You can do things for God, Amen. all right? So, let that encourage you. All right, so I have a special song. I hope that it'll be a blessing to you.
mountains come. God not so sure Amen. shall still endure all measureless and strong. Redeeming grace to Adam's race, the saints and angels song. Oh, to be taking up the Lord's offering if Brother Daniel can come forward and take up the Lord's offering for us and then ask God's blessing upon the church service with a word of prayer. Uh, dear Lord, thank you for blessing <coughs> us with another day on earth. Thank you for uh, all the blessings that you bring to our life and to our church and thank you for our pastor. Uh, please, Lord, use this uh, offering for the, for the good of you and uh, just show the whole world that, uh, that you love and just want to take care of us. And Praise the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 4, please. Luke chapter 4. We'll look at verse 6. Luke chapter 4 and verse 6. I've been going through a lot of hindrances. And even today... Maybe because of this service, I'm not, this sermon, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. But when I was doing my, you know, recollection and Bible reading, I, I realized, you know, if this verse was made in real life situation, and we were in Jesus' shoes, and Satan actually said these words, I wonder how we would respond. Look at Luke chapter 4, and we would read verse 6. The Lord Jesus Christ, he is tempted by Satan... 40 days, and Satan, I believe this was his last temptation. The chronological order is wondered, but I believe this was his final temptation because he realized he cannot, he cannot outsmart the great I am. But he realized that if he would just surrender all of the world to the Lord Jesus Christ, then maybe Jesus can change his mind. After all, Jesus Christ came into the world, why? to save the world with his blood. But he doesn't have to do it if Satan just offered him freely like that. Look at Luke chapter 4 and verse 6. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If you are in Jesus' shoe, and Satan was right in front of you, and gave you that offer and showed you every little detail and the glory and splendor of the world, 
how would you respond? Let's pray. God, my Father, I pray that you'll please wash away my sins with your precious and most holy blood and fill within me the power of your Spirit. God, people know that, Lord, I am just a man and weak and make mistakes without the Lord Jesus Christ. So I pray that the Holy Spirit will take full control and let him be the speaker. As Moses said, I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. And God, that's how I am. So I pray that you'll use me. <clears throat> and I pray, Heavenly Father, that the words that come out of today's preaching will touch people's hearts, change their lives, and give you greater glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 My title is Say No to the Devil. Say No to the Devil. So Satan, when he gives this offering to you, what's your answer? Is it no? Is it no? My first point is resisting the adversary. Resisting the adversary. The first part says, and the devil said unto him. Now I want you to bookmark this, all right? We're going to occasionally go to this verse, all right? Luke 4, 6. So I want you to bookmark that. We will always return there. I really wonder <clears throat> if you will say no to the devil. It's really easy right now to be dedicated to the Lord, to serve God, to realize that he is our enemy and to fight and resist Satan. But if it was a real life situation, and I'm going to try to make it as real as I can, and I'm going to try to expose what's in the heart. That, because I believe if we really face reality and that kind of experience, then you can get victory in your life. Then you can serve God without being hindered what the devil throws at you. It's amazing how many Christians fall prey to the devil because they never face this real life situation. They never thought about this. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, it says, Yea, and all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Now, I don't know if you realize this. We live in a day and age where people, they just come to church. That's it. You're not serious about serving God. You're not serious about, you know, I want to clean up all my life. I want to not just attend church. I want to do something in this church. I want to please God. I totally renounce everything in the world and the attacks and the suffering and whatever the devil throws at me. We have members who are carnal and disinterested, disinterested in the work of God. We think that brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so, or especially pastor and so-and-so, I mean, they'll keep the church alive. They'll keep the ministry going. No, you got to realize this. Before they were pastors, they were like you sitting in your seat and heard another pastor. So you got to realize this, is that I think people fail to realize that when they become a Christian, that they won't face hardship, trials, and etc. You got to realize this, is that that's why people, they don't dedicate themselves to the work. That's why they get out of Christianity easily, because they don't think seriously that there is a suffering, an attack, right. and a trial. That first point, resisting the adversary. You know how many Christians don't realize there is an evil, and I mean an evil adversary, yes, out to get yeah. you? You don't realize that, do you? Did you think when you became a saved Christian, you won't have to fight? Do you realize what you signed up for? Yeah. Do you realize the life that you're living in? If you don't realize that right now, that's why you became carnal. That's why you became it's wicked. That's why the right. devil got you as his prey. You don't realize, it doesn't matter who you are, okay? Oh, I'm not a pastor, but the devil won't pick on me. And, oh, you know, uh, I'm not a great soul winner. I'm not a threat. No, you got to realize this. Everyone has to fight. Everyone will face hardship. Everyone will face a trial. When you come to a Bible-believing church and you start doing Bible-believing things, it doesn't matter if you're in all the way. The devil has his sights on you and you're going to have to fight. Yes, sir. It's expected there will be attacks when you serve God. But see, people don't expect what they're going to face when they come to San Jose Bible Baptist Church. And when those bad things start happening in San Jose Bible Baptist Church, you know what members do? They drop out and they leave. Yeah. You know why? Because they did not expect. Oh, yeah, yeah. They know it in the head, right? But not in the heart. See, oh, yeah, attacks, suffering, etc. But see, they didn't really ponder which attacks, what kind of attacks. And not only that, they heard the pastor repeat it several times 
what exactly is going to happen, but they didn't really take it to heart. And when it actually happens, that's why your Bible reading slows down. Your prayer life slows down. Eventually, you don't come to church anymore. Eventually, you don't win a soul anymore. And now you haven't returned for weeks and months and years because you don't realize there's an evil. And I mean an evil adversary. It's not just an adversary. It's an evil adversary that wanted you to burn in hell with him if he had his way. If he had his way, he would have killed you had it not been for God's boundary and protection. Do you realize you have an evil adversary? Can you say no to the devil now when he offers something to you? It's easy to say it now, but when he, see, you don't realize how evil, you don't realize how hard, you don't, re, you don't see the reality of the attack. That's and when right. it actually happens, you're not gonna say no. You're, you're probably gonna take out your hand and struggle and eventually grab it. I'm going to get a uh, little secular here, so please be, please have grace with me on this part. But I believe if I give this kind of illustration, because people are so worldly-minded and secular today, you might understand what I'm about to say here. Whenever you watch so- some of these movies, like really good movies where it's dramatic about the bad guy versus the good guy, in order to make a movie really, really good, they have to make the bad guy look really evil, right? And not just, okay, I know he's the evil bad guy, but actual details and attacks that you see, and then you see how evil he really is. When the bad guy does those really evil things, and maybe the movie, they'll just deliberately do that <clears throat> for like, you know, the majority of the movie. That way you can get more emotional and get more angry at the enemy. And then you're, you're even rooting harder for the good guy who's in a minority, who's really struggling hard, who's really fighting the bad guy, but the bad guy always seems to win. You always seem to root for the good guy. And when that bad guy, he tries to tempt the good guy, and he attacks the good guy mercilessly while laughing evil. When you keep seeing that, you know what happens, right? What happens is the person says, man, I want to punch that bad guy. Man, I hate that bad guy. Man, I wish, I wish I could get there and fight and beat him to a pulp. And when he offers his world system, why don't you join my side and my crowd? You're like rooting for the good guy, right? And for the people, don't join him. Don't be so blind. It makes you want to fight him. It makes you want to resist his evil world system. How, how come you feel like that with a fantasy movie, but not in reality? How come you can't feel like that in a realistic drama that you're living in? You're facing an evil villain. And you got to realize that this evil villain is worse than any movie that you ever saw. He wants you to scream your lungs out in a burning hell. He wants to see your grandma, your grandpa, your mother, your father, your son and daughter, your wife and husband to fry in hell with him while he's cackling out loud. And he laughs out loud when he sees billions of different people following different religions. Catholicism over a billion, Islam over a billion, atheism over a billion. And then you see these dead Christian churches who are yielding in to his evil world system while he's laughing and holding the chains of billions of souls, drawing them through the broad way and slamming them into a burning hell because no one is out street preaching, no one is out door knocking, no one will come to San Jose Bible Baptist Church or any Bible believing church, no one will encourage the preacher, no one will encourage fellow brothers and sisters in Christ who are getting out of the battle and Satan is laughing his head off and saying, I win, this world is mine, let the world burn, let souls burn and you people, you are the good guys, you are in that drama, you are in that stage and you gotta get worked up and say, I gotta fight, I gotta resist that enemy. Amen. You wanna fight the devil and you wanna resist his evil world system when he offers it to you. You're in that drama. Are you into it? Are you into it? You got to realize there's an evil adversary. You got to realize that. Do you realize how evil he is? We don't realize that, do we? My second point is resisting the ability. Resisting the ability. The second part of the verse says, all this power will I give thee. So notice in our main text it says, all this power will I give thee. 
So you got to resist now the ability. Now I want you to keep having grace with me with what I'm going to say. The reason why I keep saying this is because I think that we're just so wicked. We're so worldly minded. Our flesh is so weak and pathetic that the only way you can finally understand is that if I kind of go down to your level and make you see how dark and how much of a how much you're chained up and how you got to fight it. So please have grace with what I'm about to say in this preaching. Can you say no to the devil when he gives you the ability to do what you want to do? All this power will I give thee. You got to realize this. <clears throat> Please answer honestly. If Satan gave you the ability to do whatever you wanted, and God won't punish you for it, and it's okay to do it, all right, would you accept it? Let's be more detailed so that we can actually see if Satan offered you the world. He made it, I can imagine how detailed and real and beautiful Satan made the world to Jesus Christ. Every detail. Let's go through every aspect of that so you can search your heart and realize if you can resist him. Let's start off with sin, for example. What sins are you struggling with right now? I don't know what it is. But there is something that you're struggling in your life. What if Satan made it really taste better than anything you've tasted? What if Satan made the smell even better than anything you smelled? Felt real good more than any other feeling that you ever felt. Come on, brother. Preach on that. That's good. The looks of it very appealing more than any other thing that you ever saw. The heart and the emotions where it felt so much rush of fake joy that you never felt before. What if Satan, I told you I need grace right here. You need to give me some grace here. Because I want to show something here that Satan will throw on your lap. What if that sin was so appealing? I'm not here, no one's here, and not even Jesus. Because I guess you kept blinding yourself all that time anyway. You didn't realize Jesus was right next to you sometimes. And sin is right there in front of your face. And Satan gave it and gave you all the time in the world. All, and he made it as tasty and as delectable as and enjoyable as you can. Will you do it? I'll tell you, you are doing it. Otherwise, you still wouldn't be struggling with the sin. Don't say no. Don't say no. Because you are saying yes if you're still struggling with it. And if Satan made it more real, more vivid, when you're closer to Jesus, when this church is getting more on fire, on. when we're producing That's more good. fruit, Satan's going to make it even more appealing now where he can make sure you're going to say yes. Not just sin, but what about serving God? What if he made serving God so dry? It's not going to, I mean, if you've been here for years, it's not every Sunday you're going to, it's a shame, but there's going to be Sundays you don't feel the power of God, right? Because why? People are dried out. They're backslid. Some people are struggling and having a hard time serving God. It's hard. We work in our efforts to try to encourage each other. There are sometimes some services. I've been through those services. Nobody talks. <laughs> so then I have to go through my watch quickly and say, okay, we got to jump to the next service. <laughs> you got to realize there are those moments. And saying he's going to make San Jose Bible Baptist Church or the Bible-believing your church you're attending boring. He's going to make the preacher seem boring to you. Preacher sermons, not all the time, is going to be how you expect it and want it to be. You're not listening to Dr. Peter S. Ruckman or Dr. David Peacock every single Sunday, okay? You're listening to a preacher right there who may not have the ability to preach the way that your expectation and aspiration is. And can you stomach that every Sunday and pay attention to the words of the Lord? You're going to hear songs singing in the services that's going to be just so off note and off key. And maybe you're the only one that's loud enough and everyone's so quiet. So then you join in the quiet part. Preach. What if San Jose Bible Baptist Church does not have your friend there anymore around your culture? your age or your ethnicity and gender. I always brought up this example. Let's assume that it was only an 80-year-old grandma that came to San Jose Bible Baptist Church, and it was only you and her and the pastor. Would you still attend and come? That's good, 
See, what if Satan, see, he offered up. That's why other people fall away from Bible-believing churches and they'll go to what? A larger church. A church which has more exciting programs. A church where they think the speaker speaks better and doesn't hurt or offend their feelings. Oh, I can't stomach that teaching that the pastor is teaching. It hurts my feelings. See, what if Satan, see, he gave that offer. And he made the offer where he made it real and show how mean and offensive the pastor is. Where he made church service dry and boring. So small and hardly anyone coming at all. What if he made it that vivid? And what if he made it that real? What are you going to do? Can you say no to the devil after that? What if Satan, he made your job the best job in the world and you loved it? And it was so comfortable, good pay, good hours, and that's not the will of God in your life. Only you and God know it, and I can't. It's been cutting you away from attending church, from spiritually growing in grace. But see, Satan, he made that work, job, opportunity eat so delectable because it's so hard to find another good job like this you can't give it up school you know you're so busy with school but then satan see he makes it appealing you never you've worked so hard to reach this far in school and you know how important it is to get that a you see that a right there it's so delectable you need that so you need to skip church service, you know. God understands. The people in the church understand. See, when he offers you that ability, would you say yes? Every one of you has free will, see. You all have an ability. You have an ability to sin, to taste the world, what Satan offers to you. But guess what? You also have an ability to say no. So what are you going to do about it? What if Satan, he made your family so much of a wreck? See, your husband doesn't like you anymore. Your wife doesn't like you anymore. Your boyfriend and girlfriend distancing from you. Oh, look at that. Your friends are leaving you. Oh, man, look at that. The family thinks you're crazy because you're the only one attending Bible-believing church right there, San Jose Bible Baptist Church. And you know what? You're losing friends, and you can't enjoy a good time with people anymore. Look at that and see when Satan tries to put those thoughts and he's showing you that, right? Isn't he every day showing you this stuff? And he makes it so vivid. And he makes it so real. And then what are you going to do? You're going to accept, oh, because, you know, uh, my mom, my dad, my parents, my best friend, my brother, my sister, my wife, my husband, my boyfriend, my girlfriend, my pastor, the people in the church, because of this pressure. Okay, I'll say yes, Satan. I'll, I'll, I'll follow along. See, it gives you that kind of pressure and makes it so appealing that you will cave in and say yes to the devil. So you got to be careful. You got to resist that ability. You got to resist that ability when Satan gives it out. Not only that, spiritual goals. Didn't you know even spiritual goals? Satan, he'll give you that, that kind of glamour and allure and he'll say you know look look at that if you just tone down a bit in your preaching then you could build up more people look at that if you never taught that particular doctrine the person would have still came to church oh because you taught that doctrine or preached that thing on youtube that's why the subscribers dropped you see that oh look at that i mean think about the work of the lord you see that lost soul going to hell says satan you know what you can uh street preaching does not seem the right way anymore you know so use your testimony like all those other churches are doing and befriend everybody and you know use that to eventually win them to jesus christ don't you i mean this is the work of the lord we're talking about don't you want a large church don't you want many souls getting saved don't you want a lot of fruits don't you want more subscribers on the internet don't you want don't you want it can be a spiritual thing and the devil will make it alluring and give you that ability and what are you going to do with that I'll tell you what many pastors do. They take that ability, and that's why they became powerful, popular, loved, so many people, and they get a lot of money. What are you going to do when Satan offers it to you? You know, 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4, it says, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. you got to realize this. You know what ability is greater than what Satan offers to you? It's what God offers to you. You got to realize the ability God gave to you is greater than all what? All what the devil can give to you. Yes, Do you realize that? 
all this power will I give thee? Isn't that weak and pathetic with God giving you all the filling of the spirit power will I give thee if you will follow me? But see, we see Satan, he knows that power and he wants that power. He tried to attain that power. I will be like the most high, but he never got it. Instead, he stooped down low and will burn in hell That's for all right. eternity. Yeah. And now he sees these weak, pathetic little humans that Satan could just crush with two fingers. He sees them getting the power. He sees them getting yeah. God's power in them. How dare you? How dare you? All this so Satan gives you a false power and a false ability. Look at that. All this will I give you. Look at that. You can use your ability better in the world for your life more than church, more than God. Oh, look at that. And see, he wants you. That's fake. You got to realize that's fake. Yep. That is false. That is wicked. That is sent from hell. And you got to realize this. You got to say no to the devil because he wants you not to use the ability and the power that resides within you. Amen. He knows how dangerous it is. He knows how dangerous it is when you wake up in the morning and you open up that book and start reading your Bible. And he knows that power will start to grow and well up within you. And he he don't want that so then he gives you a different ability and a power you got better time to spend than Bible reading aren't you too busy you know don't you think you should get alive and enjoy something convenient don't you think he gives you a false power a false ability because he knows that the power of reading the Bible is something very real and strange and he doesn't want you to grow in that he knows the power of prayer when you fall on your knees, beseech the God of heaven and look up to him and you say, God, please help me right here with this particular problem and situation. He knows that there will be miracles in your life that can occur that's and God it. can create that's yeah. so real, that's more beyond anything that you, that other people cannot see and cannot have. Do you know how real the power of prayer is miracles that you can see what a power that's something close to the supernatural ability of god you got to realize and satan doesn't want you to use that power he doesn't want you to use that ability he wants you to give up praying he wants you to say it's hopeless it's not going to work out he wants you to stop praying slow down because you're too busy and he offers you a false power a false ability so that you can stop using the ability of prayer he he doesn't want you to use the ability of winning souls he knows how powerful he is that satan's power of damning a soul for all eternity you got to realize this satan is so powerful that he even fooled the most brilliant phds in the world and they became one of the most demonic people sadly that ever lived it's not speaking of all PhD people. There are some good PhD people who love God and serve Jesus Christ. But you got to realize this. A far greater majority, they have fall prey to the devil system. See, that's how powerful Satan is. And he blinded them. And he realized that you've got a power that's greater than that. It's by preaching the gospel of Jesus Amen. Christ. And he can Amen. break the shackles of every lost sinner. He can break the shackles of the toughest sodomite to the toughest intellectual, to the toughest Muslim, to the toughest is Catholic and he realized the power of the gospel can break the chains of hell and he doesn't want you to use that power so he offers you a fake power a false ability you know you can use your speech for something else not for talking to a soul how to get saved you know don't preach on the street you know don't pass out a track and he gives you a false power a false ability yeah. He knows the power within you of going to church because he realized when you come to church, you rub off on other people and, uh, and the pastor will rub off on you and you rub off on the pastor and newcomers that come in, they'll rub off on each other and the Holy Spirit can flow freely and rub off on each other and it can create a powerful organization, a church where Jesus Christ said, the gates of hell yes. will not prevail oh, against God. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you saw churches of many different martyrs whose blood was shed and Satan couldn't stop it. You saw the churches who went to foreign mission fields, blinded by dark religions, and Satan couldn't stop it. <clears throat> you saw Bible-believing churches preaching the King James Bible and dispensational truth, and guess what? Satan still hasn't stopped Amen. it yet. He knows that power. He knows that ability. So he says, don't come to church today. 
Oh, you're too tired. Oh, you know, the, the, oh, over there, the people in that church or the pastor over there, and you're going to feel uncomfortable right there. And, oh, you know what? Uh, that day is not a good day because you, can't, you have got better things to do in that day. He doesn't want you to go That's to church. Right. He gives you a false power, oh. a false ability, so that you don't use the power of how dangerous a Bible-believing church can be in Satan's territory. He gives you a false power, a false ability. He also gives you a false power and a false ability to become more rich, to gain more fame. Don't you want to be the principal of a university? Don't you want to be a millionaire? Don't you want to be a politician and a government leader? You see that power and power? That's why billionaires try to run for president. You know why? They want power. Satan wants you to waste your time with that. He does, but he knows that if you fully surrender to God and say, God, I give up myself, I'm selfish, I'm flesh, I am wicked, even the, most, the things that I think are not sinful in my desire are sinful in self, if it's my way and not your way. God, I give up everything and I'm in everything of myself and yield myself to you. Do you realize what power you're yielding into when you give up all of Gene Kim and all of it is Jesus Christ? But see, you leave a little bit of Gene Kim right there. You leave a little bit of yourself right there. Well, I don't know. And a little selfishness right here. And a little fleshy right. thing right there. And a little tired thing right there. He knows that you won't get the power of God. Amen. You want Amen. the full power of God? You surrender all. And I mean all on the altar. Yeah. Every sin. Every worldly thing. Everything about yourself. Even spiritual desires. You give that up to God. And you say, God, nothing on myself. Only you, Father. Yes. Only you. And when you fully surrender all then God's power and ability can use grow mightily within you and Satan don't want that so he offers you a false power a false ability where you don't surrender to God but surrender more to the flesh surrender more to me 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 uh, what I want to do what I could do what I can accomplish etc and etc Satan gives you a false power and a false ability Amen. now I'm on point number three Resisting the allure. Resisting the allure. Look at the next part of verse 6. And the glory of them. And the glory of them. Notice right here, all this allure by Satan. Okay? All this allure by Satan. You got to realize this. Sin does have allure. Can I tell you this? So, again, please have grace with me here so you can understand how serious it is to say no to the devil. Sin is enjoyable, guaranteed. Sin tastes good, guaranteed. Sin looks good, guaranteed. Sin feels good, guaranteed. Sin, speaking about it, is good, guaranteed. I promise you this, you will have fun in sin. I promise you this, you will enjoy sin. I promise you this, you will think it's the best thing that you felt in your whole life. It's the best thing that you ever known in your entire life. Sin is enjoyable, guaranteed, I promise you that. And see, that's what Satan offers, the glory of them. Look at the allure. You're not going to complain after this. You're not going to whine after this. You're really going to enjoy it. And that's why, see, Satan gives you that job. He gives you that school. He gives you some kind of family problem or church problem or health problem. He gives you some kind of personal problem in your life. He tries to make church dry and serving Jesus Christ hard and boring. That's why Satan, he'll make the world more incredible. Look at that education. Look at that intelligence. Look at that fame. Uh, look at that money and money and more money. Look at those riches. Look at those powers and lands. Look at the pleasures. Look at those friends. Look at those family members. Look at those lovers. And he will make it glorious. He will make you enjoy a good time. Yeah. He'll make you remember the good times so that you can enjoy what is wrong and never give yourself to God. Amen. But you know the story. And you've heard me say it hundreds of times, and I don't have to repeat again. But my, 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 we... Foolish, dumb human beings need, need it heard over and over again. 1 John 2.17 says, And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. James 1.15 said, Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin when it is finished bringeth forth death. You know, you've heard this 
so many times. It's only temporary That's and right. it will hurt you in the end. Amen. That's what every sin does. That's what every worldly thing does. That's what selfish me, Gene Kim, wants. That's what I promise and guarantee will do to you. Oh, but I'm enjoying it now. Oh, I don't see anything wrong in my life. And see, that's sin. It deceives you. Yes. Makes you enjoy it. Makes you keep enjoying it. So it can blind you about its destruction that's prepared for you at the end. And I promise you this, and if you go to Christians who served God and then who messed up their lives in sin, look at them when they're in their deathbed and see if they can say they can die without regret. You know why they'll die with regret? Because they know there was something in their lives they were fooled into. And they realized how temporary it was. And they realized how much it damaged and hurt their life in the end. And they can't rewind their life anymore and serve Jesus Christ. It's too late to say no to the devil now. Because they had every opportunity and power to say no to the devil. But instead they gave up their God-given power. Took the power that Satan offered to them at the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And we ate that fruit all over again you know what I've learned I've learned to be careful what I want I've learned to be careful what I want there were times where I would want this thing to happen and that thing to happen and I would pray about it and you know what God taught me he taught me to be careful with what I want because there were times I wanted something and it's not even a sin it's not even a sin at times most of the times it's not, but then Satan, he makes it alluring. And then, you know what? I wanted that. I believe that there was nothing wrong with it. I believe that I can do something more for the glory of God with it. But then what happens is once I experienced it, then the Lord taught me. See, it actually became worse, didn't it? And I was like, yeah, I didn't think it turned out that way. I mean, I knew, I knew that it might turn worse, but I didn't think it worked turn out that way. You know why? It's a di there's a difference with knowledge and experience. When you experience and you realize the exact details why it became worse for you. And you realize that those exact details that became worse for you, you can't say it properly to warn others about it. That's good. So you know what happened? There were times that I wanted something or would pray for something and God would show me and let me go through it. He would let it happen, and I would get what I want, and guess what? It turned out to be the opposite. It turned out to be the opposite. So then I wanted something else that was opposite of that then. So I was like, okay, if what I want is not that good for me, then I want the opposite of that, Lord. And guess what? It still didn't turn out the way that I wanted. So uh, you know what I learned to do? I finally learned what true surrender, truly giving up desire was. I was like, God, I don't care what I want anymore. You give me what That's you think good. is best for me. And guess what? It turned out right every single time. And whenever the devil tempted me <clears throat> and showed me, oh, it's not really that great after all, I, I cast him aside and I said, no, I've been through years of this already. I learned my lesson. You, you're not going to fool me again. And guess what? When I resisted that, the Lord proved to me later on that it was truly for the betterment. So you know what the best advice for you is? Complete giving up, complete surrender yeah, of everything it. what you want. That's it. What is it? Job? What is it? School? What is it? Family? What is it? Friend? What is it? Lover? What is it? Church? What is it? Riches? What is it? Possession? What is it? Uh -huh. Pleasure? What is it? Fame? What is it? Intelligence? Give it all up and say, God, I don't care. Even your spiritual goal, something that's spiritually that you want. Give it all up and say, God, I don't care. I want what you want. My fourth point, resisting the authorization. Resisting the authorization. Notice the next part of that verse. It says, for that is delivered unto me. For that is delivered unto me. Notice right here that now I'm not speaking about the devil here now. This is God. Do you realize it? This part of the verse is God. You know why Satan has all the power in the kingdoms of the world? It was delivered to him by God. God authorized it. And you got to realize this. The things that you want that will allure you, that will captivate you, what is wrong in the eyes of God, God can let it happen. Do you realize that? God can let it happen. He can allow it because everyone has free choice. 
In Revelation chapter 3, verse 16 through 19, we won't turn there for time's sake, but in that verse, God says, Him that I love, I rebuke and chasten, be zealous therefore and repent. You know what? You live in a day and age, and don't act all self-righteous. That includes you too. You know that there are things that you want and you cry about it and you pray to God about it. Some of, some of you young people or disinterested, disinterested Christians, you get upset when the preacher points out a specific sin. You get upset when God doesn't do things the way you want it and you become bitter and mad when he puts some kind of personal experience in your life. You don't like it when God doesn't do things your way. You don't like it when mom and dad on, tell preach. you that that's not right to do. And you say, no, I want to keep that worldly music. No, I want to do that worldly thing. And I don't care if it's sin. And you don't like it when, you know, your brothers and sisters in Christ are living holy. And then that makes you feel uncomfortable and you don't like it. You don't like that. You don't like it when God chastises you to do something right. When the man of God tells you to do something right. And when your parents tell you to do something right you don't like that and guess what then God will give you what you want Amen. and that's why you look at the statistics of Christians when do they fall away once they're free in their own independence and they do what they want to do in life because now they're free from the chastisement they're free from supervision of what God merciless, Amen. mercifully gave Amen. so that they don't fall into the world, so that they don't fall into sin. I'm, I mean, this is not just young people. You can tell this includes you too. And you got to realize this, is that when you say, God, no more punishment, no more chastisement. God, can't you uh, understand my situation here? Oh, why do my parents have to be so controlling? Oh, why did the preacher have to preach that way? And you better stop that because then God will give you what you want and that will stop. And that is the most dangerous thing, the, the most merciless thing God can do. The most scary thing God can do is not chastising you. It's when he lets you go and spews you out of his mouth. And he says, I don't want anything to do with you anymore. You wanted that independence? I will let you have it. That's why Revelation 3, it continues, I will spew thee out of my mouth. He's going to let you go. Look, man, I mean, you want to run away and into college and do what you want, young people? God will give you what you want. Oh, man, uh, you don't like it when God chastises you anymore and you beg, stop right there, Lord, be understanding, lessen it a bit. God will give you what you want. Oh, preacher, can't you tone it down the preaching and understand this situation? God will give you what you want. And when God gives you what you want, that is the most dangerous thing that can ever happen is when he gives up on you then who gets a hold of you after that? That's it. Right. Yeah. That's then it. Satan starts his claws on you because you know why Satan can't put his claws on you? God put boundaries and limitations, did he not? He says, don't touch him. No, you're not going to tempt him with that. No, uh, I'm going to make sure that the preaching and the parents and whatever I chastise him will make sure he lives in the right path. Not yet, Satan. That's mercy. And when God lets go... And then if he didn't do that with you on Job and says, look, I give up on that person. The person didn't appreciate what I'm doing for him. The person didn't like how I'm supervising and then guiding them and leading them into all truth. They didn't appreciate my chastisement. They didn't appreciate the preacher. They didn't appreciate the parents. They didn't appreciate what I've done to put the boundaries and prevent them from falling. I let go, you have him, Satan. And that is the worst thing. The most scary thing is when Satan puts his claws on you. Amen. And you're so blind and deceived. That's why there are some Christians who became atheists. Do you not realize that? Bart Ehrman believed every word of the Bible was perfect. He even said that himself. Now he became one of the most famous atheists criticizing the manuscript evidence of the Bible. True. What are you going to do now? What are you going to do? That's the most dangerous thing is Satan having full control on you. don't like God controlling you? Then let Satan control you. You're so blind to think, oh, it's me, 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 me. No, there's only two powers. That's God and Satan. That's right. You can say me, me, me all you want, but Satan, that's his, that's his opportunity to deceive you and make you think me, 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 me. Because me and I trans 
translates to you to Lucifer at Isaiah 14. I will be like the Most High. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will sit upon the the sides of the north. I, I, I. And when you say, I want this, I want that, I don't like this God, I, you don't think that's the devil, you think that's you, but when you translate that I and look behind the eye, that's oh, Satan oh, at Isaiah 14, 12. Amen. You keep, I want to do this. I don't want to go to church. I don't want to serve yeah. God. That I translates to, that. Lucifer doesn't want me to serve come God. On. Lucifer doesn't want Amen. me to come to church. Now I can see why. That the devil doesn't like this preaching. Matthew chapter 15 verse 18 through 19. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart. And they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. Now you see this? The verse says everything you do in life comes from the heart. Now, when God tells you, you know you need to read the Bible, child. You know you need to give up that sin, child. You know that worldly thing you're involved with, job, school, or whatever in your house. It's preventing you to serve me effectively. And then you know what you do? Oh, God, I'm too tired. Oh, God, I'm too busy. God, can't you understand? I need a little bit of fun. God, aren't you too controlling? You see that? You know what that? When you said those words, it already showed what's in your heart. It showed you said yes to the devil. When he offered you those things. Amen. So before you say, oh, I can't come to church. Before you say, I can't witness to a soul. Before you say, I can't give up that worldly thing or that sin. Before you say, oh, you know, uh, God could have done it a different way or a better way. And before you say that, it shows what's in your heart. And you said yes to the devil. My last point, and then we're all done. Resisting the availability Resisting the availability. The last part of the verse, it says, And to whomsoever I will, I give it. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. Can you resist what's available? You know what Satan's looking for? Availability. Yeah. Just like there's always room at the cross for you, there's always room in hell for you. That's right. That's good. Hell increaseth and enlargeth itself. It's never full. So Satan always looking for someone available that he can give. Revelation chapter 12, verse 10 through 11, it reads, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. I want to challenge you with this. In this passage, you know what Satan does? Satan, he accuses day and night, day and night. Every opportunity, he will always try to find something. It doesn't matter if you're in your Bible reading or if you're in this church or if you're out soul winning. Day and night, he's going to find some slip hole somewhere where he can get a hold of you and then he can offer up the world and say, say yes to me, say yes to me, say yes to me. And he does that day and night. You know why Satan will offer up the worldly thing? He, why does Satan make the sin so appeal? Why does Satan make your job so convenient? Why does Satan make school the most valuable thing in your life? Why does Satan make your friend, your family member, and your lover the best thing in your life? Why does Satan always try to make Bible reading and prayer such a hard thing to do? Why does the devil make uh, the Bible-believing churches, San Jose Bible Baptist Church, not the church for you? Why does the devil, he tries to make what your desire is not actually sinful, but it can be a good thing used for God? Why does Satan keep doing that you know why because he knows you can overcome him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of your testimony he knows that there is some power when you read that bible and when you pray on your knees and when you go out and win a soul and when you come to san jose bible baptist church or a bible believing church and when you give up that sin and when you finally say gene kim is out of the way lord all of gene kim is gone only you he knows this he doesn't want that he is scared of that he doesn't want that at all. He doesn't want God to get the glory. He wants the world to burn in hell. He doesn't want you to rule cities. He doesn't want you to get gold, silver, precious stones. He doesn't want you to get the five crowns. He does not want you to get the world 
because he's gonna lose the world when he fries in hell and you're gonna rule the world that Satan offered you earlier. Amen. And you gotta realize this, is that that devil, he does not want you to have that, so he will make it available to you. You know why? Because he knows if he didn't tempt at that very second, yep. the very next second is when you yielded your heart to Christ. Yes. The very next second is when you finally convinced yourself to pray on your knees. The very next second, you are determined to keep this church going. The very next second, you are about to get the boldness to witness to a soul. And at that timing, Satan will throw out his temptation and attack so that you can go back to square zero once yeah. more. Yeah. And he that's why he's doing that right now yeah. in your heart so that you can block your ears and not get convicted by the preaching of the word of God because Satan's doing one last time, say yes to me and no to God. And God, he gives you now this opportunity. And Satan now, you know what he did? He showed you all the beautiful world now. And what are you going to do this time at this altar call? Will you say no to the devil and read your Bible? Will you say no to the devil and start praying? Will you say no to the devil and say, I give up this worldly thing? Will you say no to the devil and quit that sin? Will you say no to the devil and finally go out and win a soul to Jesus Christ? Will you say no to the devil finally, finally, and then go on the altar and say, God, I'm sick and tired. No more, no more. I'm not doing this over and over again. Dear Lord God, this is all of me. I've been Holding it back in every preaching, God, all of me, you get all of me so that Satan, he doesn't find a loophole to use that allure to get me away from you once more. Amen. Say no to the devil today. Amen. Every head Amen. bow and every eye shut. The altar call is open. And say no to the devil. Say, I refuse to accept this world. The altar call is open. You can feel free to come here forward on the altar's floor and pray, or pray in your seat. It doesn't matter. Feel free, do freely what the Holy Spirit leads on your heart. I give you this time now to pray and to look through things in your life, and you're gonna say no to the devil. You gotta say, no more, Lord. I'm sick and tired. No more, Lord. I give up. Satan's got you in something, hasn't he? He's fooled you in something, hasn't he? It's about time that you break your stubborn heart and say, God, finally, I quit, I give up. It's you, Jesus, it's you. Say no to the devil. And guess what? Satan, the Bible says Satan departed from tempting Jesus for a season. That's what it said. Satan's not done. So guess what? Satan's going to return with you as well. He's going to return. Offer you the world once more. All this power and the glory of them will I give thee. And God will allow it. That is delivered unto me. God will allow it. He will let you have it. So why not take it? Eat that fruit one more time. Take a large bite and enjoy Say no to the devil. By God's grace, you're going to say no, and you're going to resist every attack and suffering and worldly offer. Put what you selfishly feel in your heart and what you think is best and what you think is spiritually right. You're going to put that aside too. Every Christian has that problem. Oh, I'm spiritually right about something right here. You, you got to put away that pride and say, God, I'm not going to think what is spiritually best for me. I'm going to go by what you think is spiritually best for me, Lord. I'm tired, Lord. I'm tired, God. May you take full control. Say no to the devil and never give in. <clears throat> God, my Father, I pray that today's preaching has touched and changed people's lives. I do know this. While I was preparing the sermon, there were hindrances, constant hindrances, Lord. And I don't know how the end result came out. I hope it came out the way you wanted. And I hope it actually really helped people and that there is a big fruit out of this. Maybe that's why Satan put it hindrances at the beginning. 
Heavenly Father, I, I'm not sure about the whole process of this preaching, but I do know this. This is a sermon that you led upon my heart to preach. And I do know this. This preaching has touched something in someone's life so that they can dedicate themselves to serve you better. That much I do know, Lord. And I pray that you'll bless and honor it, Lord, and so that we can give you the better glory. Lord God, all the power and the glory, you offered it to us a long time ago, Lord. And you're giving it to us now. All we have to do is use it. Why are we so blind and deceived to go by what the devil offers? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Out of all the wrong doctrines that's happening in our day and age at the last days of the church, as the apocalypse is coming even closer, the point of all this, friend, is that you won't be even able to grow in knowledge of the truth, in Bible-believing truth, until you get saved first. The most important question you have to ask yourself after watching all this is if you were to die today, are you 100% sure that you're going to go to heaven? Perhaps one of these wrong doctrines have affected you and you had the improper way of salvation. As you have seen before, the way to get saved is very simple. It's only simply salvation by grace alone without works through the Lord Jesus Christ in this Christian day and age. If you're not sure that you can go to heaven after you die, it's very simple to get saved. First of all, you have to understand that because of sin, God is a holy God, and He cannot even allow 1% of sin into heaven. So He has to judge sin with a burning hell. So it is very important that you got to realize how serious sin is, and you must repent. You might say, well then, I guess I have to clean up all my sins. I guess I have to go to church. I guess I have to get baptized. I have to, I have to be a good person. No, my friend, good works can never save you. Jesus is God who died, buried, and resurrected so that he can pay all the sins for you. You don't have to pay a single sin for yourself. So all you have to do as a repentant sinner is turn to what he did on the cross alone for your salvation. You might say, well, pastor, I do believe only on what Jesus did on the cross to save me. That's great. Then all you have to do is just say that to the Lord. You might say, well, preacher, I haven't prayed much before in my life. I don't know really how to say it to God. Can you help me out? Sure, you can say it this way. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. As I repent, I put my faith that Jesus is God and that he died, buried and resurrected so that his blood can wash away my sins. I put my faith in that alone to save me, not my good works. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Congratulations, my friend, if you meant it with all your heart that you put your faith only on what Jesus did on the cross through his blood to save you, then you are saved. It's that simple, my friend. Now, my friend, it is important to grow in Bible-believing truth. You now know the truth. What are you going to do about it? As the apocalypse comes even more closer and Satan's about his, to set up his kingdom even more, there are many souls dying and going to hell, and even many more churches out there who don't know right and wrong doctrine. It is up to you now on what to do. And go to our resources site, www.bbcenglish.org, and click on the resources link over there, and it'll give you everything that you need to grow in grace. The next step of your journey now is up to you. We've done our part giving you this movie. All of it was done for free by the love of the people. God bless you.